board certified family medicine doctor about to diagnose some MLB injuries. I wonder if my little league skills would still hold up to this day. Oh, pop fly, sure sack has fly. The best arm. Fairly shallow, more center than Let's right. Let's see the arm, shoot the arm. Cousins is gonna test him. Posey can't handle it, oh. and Posey gets clobbered. It looks like maybe his leg got caught underneath him and his knee might be problematic here. Here Dave we go. Rester and assistant trainer Mark Bruce back out there. With Bruce Bochy. Oh, maybe it's an ankle injury. Remember, a lot of times when you're rolling an ankle, you're landing on an inversion injury. Usually in those instances, you have a sprain of a ligament or a tear of a ligament. But if it has happens to be an eversion injury where your leg, your foot turns outside, there's a ligament on the inside there called a deltoid ligament. And that is so strong that it usually ends up ripping off a piece of bone, creating what's known as an avulsion fracture. Posey suffered a fractured fibula and torn ligaments on his ankle requiring season-ending surgery. There's two bones in the lower foot. So on top you have the femur, on the bottom you have the tip fib, and the fib is on the outside. So it looks like he had an inversion injury, but it must have been so bad that there might have been a fracture from either an avulsion where the ligaments ripped off a piece of bone or the ligaments tore, but then also there was contact that created a fracture as well. But also Buster Posey went on to win Comeback Player of the Year, the National League MVP, and two World Series championships with the Giants. Impressive stuff. Oh, oh my gosh. Hit by pitch. I mean, you could tell right by the pitcher's reaction that this was a complete accident. And it caught him right, it looked like up under the helmet. Oh my God, that's a broken orbit. I'm so worried for the nerves. I'm so worried for the muscles. Cheek. Oh yeah, that's a zygomatic eye. arch fracture. That is recoverable though, as long as no significant head trauma, meaning brain trauma had occurred. Stanton suffered multiple facial fractures, dental damage, and cuts that needed stitches. On December 17th, the Marlins announced that Stanton would shut down the rest of the 2014 season. Wow, I mean, it's very difficult to see after an injury like that, there's lots of swelling. Also probably hard from like a traumatic standpoint to get back up into the, into the batter's box and uh, face pitches flying at you 100 plus miles an hour. For a manager, all the buttons that you push, you're hoping for good things, and they just haven't tapped that way. Oh, oh did he catch it? Tap is on the ground. Molina comes in I to score. Escobar it. scores. I think he got hit at the side of the head there. It's so hard to see. It happened so quickly. It's so important to put patients on a brace like this to protect the, at least the cervical spine so that you don't move it when the spine itself is unprotected. Remember, the spine sits within a vertebral column that protects the spine. But now if there are fractures and loose bony fragments in that area, that could potentially create a severed spinal cord. And that's obviously very devastating because the higher up a spinal injury occurs, where you have, a, let's say, a complete tear, the more likely that you are to become further paralyzed and potentially to the point Point where it could be so high that it could be lethal. According to ESPN.com, had been placed on a 15-day disabled list with a skull fracture behind his left ear that doctors believe will heal on its own, as well as a sore right knee that he tweaked when he dropped to the ground. Wow, so there's a little area in the back of the skull here called the mastoid process. Not related to this, but What's interesting about the mastoid process is that if you have an ear infection, or let's say an inner ear infection or a middle ear infection as we call it, if untreated, can actually progress in some instances to an osteomyelitis, which is an infection of the bone directly here in the mastoid process, which is why whenever we do an exam, we might feel this area to see if it is uniquely tender. Ground ball right side. Chris Johnson's got it. Oh no, Jason Hurley. Is down. Oh my God. That's the problem with a lot of these shoes. Whenever you're trying to change direction, they can get stuck in the ground. He was hurting all the way over there. Interesting. I wonder, like I didn't, there was no misstep. He was hurting all the way Was it a stress fracture there. that complete, oh, his foot looks pretty loose there. Atlanta Braves closer Jason Grilly suffered a torn Achilles while running to cover first base during the ninth inning against the Colorado Rockies. The issue with not having an intact Achilles is you have no control over your foot, so your foot's essentially dropped. When a patient comes in and if we want to see if the Achilles tendon is in, intact, you essentially squeeze the calf. And when you squeeze the calf, you should see the foot flex. And if you're not seeing that flexion and the foot moving from squeezing the calf muscle, that's considered a positive Thompson test. You would suspect that there is a t tear, either a full tear or partial tear of the Achilles tendon. Look in, get my sign. 
Oh, one-handed pitcher? In front of my body, I wanted to hide my grip. Worried about the third base coach, worried about the first base coach. Oh, because he was worried about the coaches tipping off the player. Set, eyes still on the target. I mean, his eyes were kind of on the ground there, but. Right back to the mound, he goes to second for one out. Oh, he got the it's double the play and all. Here's Abbott now. He took Lieber to a full count in the second inning before going down on the strikeout. Line over the Wait, he's batting? What? It's gonna score a run, baby. Dare I say he did that single-handedly? Left three men on. This one almost gets Reyes. What's oh. going, Lackey? Uh oh. Ah, uh, that elbow does injury. Not look good at all. According to Pete Abraham of the Boston Globe, Lackey is suffering from a simple bicep strain rather than a more serious injury many had feared, and just as I had feared. As you can see by the title, bicep, there's two muscles that actually form the biceps, and based on their attachments, it can create a strain when throwing a ball because of that torque and spin that you're trying to put on the ball. That's why uh, a lot of movements like this, which we call supination, require the strength of the biceps. And part of our special test that we do to check the long head of the biceps tendon up here in the shoulder requires us to make use of the supination motion. Tough hop, Ramirez gets rid of it quickly. Oh no. Oh, oh, no. oh my god. Yeah. Anytime you have neck hyperextension, you start threatening the arteries in your neck. Most like likely to be injured here are the vertebral arteries in the back of the neck that run on either end of the spine. I mean, you also have the carotids that uh, just so so much can go wrong there. Ramirez had to get rid of it quickly because he knew Lewis runs well. Thank goodness his outstretched hands took some of the force. And yes, I know it still was a bad injury, but it could have been a lot worse. He landed on his head. Royce Lewis appears to be okay now. He's the He's okay? Hitter. Incredible. I mean, most of the momentum must have carried him perfectly, but there had to have been some kind of strain on the anterior scalenes. At least the sternocleomastoid, a muscle that attaches from the sternum, sterno, cleo, uh, clavicle, mastoid, a mastoid process right here. It's the muscle that attaches here. So imagine if it pulls on it, that's the kind of motion that it does. Off the end of the bat into short Ooh. center field. Ooh, Damian sharp pop fly. Damian Jackson going out. They oh up. my God. And the ball is dropped. Throw in the second and they still got the runner. Wow. But Damon and Jackson. You got to call it. Tommy. Oh, they ran fed first. I have been a witness to these types of head-on collisions during soccer matches where both people went up for a header and that clunk, that sound, nothing can prepare you for hit it, hearing two skulls just crack against each other. And even the injury is initial when they bump into each other, but then when their heads hit the ground, that's also the secondary injury that could be equally as problematic, if not more. You gotta remember the brain sits in a soup, so when you rattle it one way, it's gonna come back the other way. It's called a counter coup injury. Johnny Damon was on the ground for nine minutes before taking off. He had a significant concussion, but was alert awake when he was taken to Highland Hospital. Thank goodness, because those types of injuries can become really problematic. There's all sorts of bleeds that can happen in the brain, both epidural and subdural, depending on which layer above the brain is bleeding. So very lucky, very lucky that this turned out this way. Ellen, for years, the Giants held out. Sam, you just put Giants. Is a lot of injured guys? No, this is, Max this is unfair. Williamson would be their next star outfielder. Put the Padres in here. They just had the Padres. We had it. Oh. oh, you're lucky you don't break your neck. Oh, it, it was hard to watch. Oh, wow. Williamson running full speed after a foul ball, tripping over the bullpen mound and into the sidewall. Wow. He suffered a concussion. And he says the effects of that head injury still linger. You know, concussions effects can last a really long time depending on the severity of the concussion, your genetic predisposition, how soon you have another concussion or an injury to the head. This is why we really try to discourage athletes from returning to sport too soon. The way we judge between an appropriate time or too soon is based on symptomatology, how they're feeling, how they're performing. So if you're back to normal, not having symptoms, that's a good sign that you're good to return. But a lot of athletes will sometimes hide those symptoms in order to return sooner, putting themselves at risk for a more serious injury down the line. Off the end of the bat, pool shot. Can anybody get the first? Machado's gonna beat everybody. Beckham went over to get it, but Chano fell down. Did he turn to second? They're going to tag him, but he's hurt. Oh my gosh. 
Remember, through mechanism of injury, we can oftentimes see and predict what the, the injury is based on where the force is coming from, where the body weight is going. We can see which ligament or muscle or bone is affected. Could be a terrible triad type. It looks like his ankle is really bad. Of the bag and his knee went, oh, inward. He suffered a torn medial patellofemoral. Wow, okay, so that's really unique that that happened for him. And the way doctors make this diagnosis is a few ways. One, we're looking at the mechanism of injury. Two, we're confirming with the physical exam. And then three is imaging, specifically MRIs. And a lot of times you'll see people get x-rays first. In some instances, that's due to insurance companies saying you need to prove that there's no bone issue. Remember, x-rays only look at bones, whereas MRIs can look at soft tissue, connective tissue, like ligaments, tendons, etc. So we'll get the x-ray, rule out any bony pathology, and then move on to the MRI, showing us the soft tissue uh, injury or potential injury. This is a celebration, so I don't know how this is gonna go wrong. What is happening? Hopefully Edwin Diaz isn't really hurt. A lot of times what uh, we don't realize with athletes is towards the end of games when celebrations are more likely to happen, there's a high level of fatigue, especially in the supportive and protective muscles. And when there's that high level of fatigue, you don't have the same shock absorption, protection from injury, natural reflexes that kick in in order to prevent further damage from occurring. Mets general manager, Billy Epler, announced Thursday that Diaz will undergo surgery and is likely to miss the entire 2023 season. Diaz suffered a complete tear of his right patellar tendon. The issue that I see more so in younger athletes that uh, the patellar tendon starts to impact is something known as Oshkod Schlatter disease, where the patellar tendon that attaches to the tibia actually pulls on the bone so much, and while that bone is developing and is a little bit soft, it creates an inflammatory pulling effect on the bone leading to inflammation and pain within that bone. It's a condition of adolescence, but I've seen it continue into early 20s for some of my patients, especially ones that <clears throat> are more likely to be physically active. Here's the set. The 3-2 pitch, a wild oh, pitch oh, back to the happened. screen, scoring from third. Did the UCL is fully tear there? It's ball four and Saunders is hurt. A wild pitch because something in his arm snapped. He was diagnosed with a humerus fracture, which is an upper arm fracture. Very unusual for that to happen. I mean, in an average healthy adult without trauma, I would be worried about a pathogenic fracture, a fracture happening as a result of some sort of bony process, like a cancer. In the air to shallow left. Long run. Look out! Oh. Abrams makes the catch, but cleats go into Profar. And both cleats? are injured. Jerks and getting looked at his jaw. Oh, God, knee to jaw. And the knee is such a strong bone. The knee is actually not a bone. It's the femur meeting the tibia, sitting with the patella on top of it. The San Diego Padres announced that outfielder Jerickson Profar has been diagnosed with a concussion and a cervical neck strain after colliding with a teammate. A cervical neck strain is just the musculature of the cervical spine, which is the top portion of the vertebral column. Remember, the vertebral column is made up of the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, the mid spine, the lumbar spine, the lower spine, the sacrum, the really lower spine, and then the final coccyx, which is the tailbone. We used to have vestigial tails, but we outgrew those. Or we ungrew those, probably a better term. Boys will be Matches? boys. A hot foot has been scheduled. Is that a we shall await fire further developments. Or Scott Van Slyke. Well, Adrian certainly set it on fire. Something smells wrong in here. <laughs> what is it that smells? Ah, now <laughs> we found it. Don't light your teammates on fire. That's good advice. A burn, especially in that area, is gonna make it really tough to do anything on the field, let alone run or pitch or anything. Solomon Torres facing Sosa in the fourth. Sosa, oh, wow. Wow, and he hit him in the temple. That's a very dangerous area to get hit. That's a soft spot. Ah, that's gonna hurt. Not good. Adam Jones inadvertently damaged some pretty expensive equipment. The oh. mid-home Robocam is out of commission. Wham! Oh, <laughs> that's gotta be a TikTok. Someone make that into a TikTok. You know, when you post a video and everyone's thinking that they're watching really intently, then boom, that always messes with me. How about reacting to NFL injuries with the Brandon Marshall? Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.